Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stephen and Paul from WinExtra bringing you your daily brief for February 9th, 2011. 91 episodes and still amazed by the stupidity out there, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hopefully by the time we hit 100 shows, we'll, we'll have it, you know, Tightened down so everything is working properly. Audio, video. You oh, know? No, I was talking about upcoming stories, not the fact that last oh. night's show went out with the video sort of half the size it's supposed to be everywhere. Not looking at anybody in particular. The yeah. man behind the editing console. Yes. <laughs> Make fun of me all you want. I don't care. Okay. Um, <laughs> first up, we have a, a PSA for the day, uh, courtesy of Mary Jo Foley. Um, it's Windows 7 Service Pack 1 and Server 2008 Release 2 candidate. Yeah, are now to um, OEMs today. Yeah. So, uh, people on MSDN and TechNet, the Microsoft uh, Developer Network and TechNet, are going to get it on the 16th of February. And everybody else will get it on or around the 22nd of February, which is when it will hit general availability. Now, our sort of PSA on that, folks, is um, this stuff is already available on BitTorrent. Don't, Don't get it. it. No. Okay. Now, there may be a, a number of sources out there that are pure, that are clean, so to speak, but, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the sources out there for this are infected and whatnot. And you're not rushing to get anything spectacular. There's a few updates for things like remote desktop. Uh, remote FX, um, but generally this is just an amalgamation of all the security patches and everything <coughs> that's come out. So you know, if you've been keeping your machine up to date, there's no need to rush out to get this. Just wait, and it'll come to you on February 22nd. Just make sure you have your automatic updates turned on. Yeah. So um, now this one next one I wrote about yesterday, and, and when this you is what saw I was it, talking you, about at the beginning of the show. Yeah, this is the one you went kind of went. Oh my God. But apparently there's a, a woman in Britain who is telling Microsoft that it's their fault that her son spent just over a thousand pounds or which works out to about fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's Microsoft's yeah, the, fault. The woman's name is Dawn Matthews, and apparently her eleven year old child managed to spend one thousand and eighty two British pounds on uh, Xbox Live. And it's Microsoft's fault. It's Microsoft's fault that, you know, she plugged her credit card into Xbox Live and didn't set her son up with a separate account. It's Microsoft's fault that uh, she didn't use the parental controls that are available on Xbox 360. And it's Microsoft's fault that this went on for six months, going through her checking account without her ever realizing that these deductions were being made. It's all Microsoft's fault that she's as thick as two short planks and, you know, our son was getting a free ride. <laughs> and, uh, but, of course, that's Microsoft's fault. <laughs> Seriously, people, I, I mean, these, these stories get me because it's kind of like, oh, dear God, I did something stupid. Let's blame the manufacturer. Let's blame everybody else for my own idiocy. And let's not stand up and take responsibility yeah. for it myself. You know, I, I mean... Over the course of six months. So obviously the child, the 11 year old child is playing Xbox on the parent's account. Uh, because on Xbox you can set up multiple profiles, I notice, because I do this whenever uh, we have kids over here. And um, so he's playing unsupervised and she's not watching what he's doing, where he's going, where, not questioning where well, he's Well, she getting. is working two jobs. Oh, my hairy arse. She's not questioning where he's getting new games or new stuff for his icons. or do, In other words, what you're telling me is that Xbox 360 is his babysitter? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's yeah. her fault, yes. not Microsoft. Let's move on. Before okay. <laughs> um, this one kind of irritates the hell out of me. Uh, Google VP claims Nokia Windows Phone 7 partnership is two turkeys. Now, this is coming from former Microsoft employee Vic Gundatra, who claimed indirectly that Nokia's potential partnership with Microsoft is two turkeys. Now, look, right off the bat, I just want to say this. This seems to be a common thing when, when executives of a certain level re, you know, move on to other companies. Suddenly, Microsoft becomes the company to bash. 
No, yeah, as soon as you're out of there, you go bash it. Um, yep. I look. I can kind of see where he's coming from. You know, Windows Phone Seven sales aren't <laughs> exactly stellar at the moment, but you know, Nokia is still the number one handset provider in the world, and they know what they're doing. And you know, Windows Phone Seven is a great operating system. We nobody can turn around and say it's not a good operating system. Okay. Yeah. And you know, Nokia is looking for a decent smartphone operating system. So, in many senses, it's a partnership made in, uh, well, maybe not heaven, but it's certainly a very nice. In the boardroom, you know. And um, I don't know. I, I get, I get, I get the perception that maybe this is fear. Um, overall, on a sort of a company-wide level, not exactly on a product-wide level, but it, it's fear. Sort of, Google it, lately making a lot of moves and making a lot of statements that are kind of saying, you know, we're afraid of Microsoft. We saw it with the Bing thing. Yep. Um, well, we've got the new one out now. And the, uh, Google is, blames Microsoft for turning Washington against us. And what? what are they saying? Oh, dear God, Microsoft has set up a lobbying group and they're actually being effective. <laughs> Without anybody actually saying that you know Microsoft really has a lobbying group, but the chances are that they do. Just like Google has a lobbying group, and every major company has a bloody lobbying yeah. group, group, uh, in Washington, <laughs> and uh, you know all trying to push their own interests through. It's fear. It's fear mongering. It's oh my God, don't pick at us. But you know what? Google has become big enough now that they're starting to attract attention from. Lawmakers that people yep. are starting to ask questions, and it just—it's one of those things. Microsoft went through it in the nineties, and you know, it's one of those things that happens when you hit a certain size, size. Yep. and uh, there's just nothing you can do about it. But the fact that they're running and crying and blaming Microsoft for it—come um, on, Jesus, get a grip, you know guys! Microsoft are responsible for a little bit of it. They're responsible well, for see, something. Yeah, but you, you know, you, if Microsoft wasn't. You know, participating in this to to raise you know concerns, then they wouldn't be doing their job for their shareholders. Period. Yeah, but Google is doing the same thing too. Google has people and lobbyists and whatnot in Washington. AT and T has them. You name a big tech company, you name a big provider, you name a big anything, and you know they have lobbyists. Yeah. It's it's that simple. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. But getting back to the sort of the Nokia thing. Interesting thing that I heard today, uh, well, yesterday, I suppose, on Tech News Today, somebody brought up the point of this. Nokia's ways, way to distinguish themselves from all the other phone manufacturers out there may not be just to be uh, doing Nokia hardware with Microsoft OS. They could become the player that does everything Them all. OS. Yeah. Exactly. And Android. Because they have enough handsets, they have enough market share, that they can afford to experiment and try them all. Yeah. Android, Windows Phone 7, their own Mego, and Symbian. Yeah. Like, Symbian yeah. is suited perfectly for, for feature phones. The cheap throwaway you know, phones is perfect for that. Well, think uh, about it. If, if they make a solid handset, right? A really, really solid handset that has good specs, yeah. and then let people choose which OS do you prefer on our handset. We'll give you the choice. You can have this handset with... Uh, with Android, or you can have this handset with Windows Phone 7, yeah. or you can have it with Beagle. Yeah. Why not? Be an interesting idea. Um, just as a little humor bit here, I guess apparently Bing now has a like button on the main page where if you like the, the, the photograph being used for the day, you can like it. That's cool. Yeah. That's good. Clever marketing. They have a partnership with Facebook. They own a part of Facebook. Why not? Well, the thing is, they've got a real deep partnership. But you know, every time you turn around, they're they're doing something with with yeah. uh, with Facebook. So I'm not it's surprised. Makes sense to me. Yeah, good idea. Kind of a cool idea because I know I I love the I love the images on Bing search. Whenever I hit the main page, I know. But would you very really often. thumb them up? If I saw one, See, I really the only reason I wouldn't thumb that up is because I know it's going to be a different image tomorrow. So if I thumb it up today, it's a different image tomorrow. Unless they got plans on unless doing, unless they, they got plans on doing like a, a theme pack of Facebook favorites. That maybe, or unless they have just you know some way that that particular image is what you thumb up. 
uh, rather than the rather than the the page itself. I don't know. Interesting, anyway. Yeah. And it, it, all it is again is marketing and sort yeah. of you know keeping people at the fr- keeping Bing at the front of people's consciousness. Now, something that's at the front of my consciousness, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, was the uh, the rumor that we were going to get a connectified version of Gears of War. Now. Mm-hmm. We talked about it. The rumor was put down. It wasn't going to come in Gears of War three. It doesn't. We've had uh, denials that it's going to come in the recently trademarked Gears of War Exile, but people are still insisting that it's coming. And the latest um, rumor that was kind of tongue in cheek, but accepted by uh, Epic's uh, design director, Cliff uh, Blazniski, I can hardly pronounce the man's name, um, is that we're going to see an on-the-rails game, a Gears of War game for Kinect. I, uh, on-the-rails, I, I don't like on-the-rails games. I'm no, sorry. no, no. And by on-the-rails, folks, we mean that your character is there and the game... Just goes by you. Just at its own rate. It takes you, yeah. it takes you down, yeah. and you know you shoot things or you die or whatnot, but you don't actually have control over your character moving. Yeah. I don't like those kind of games, so it'll be interesting to see how, if this is coming, that will translate. But that is currently what is in the rumors, rumor yeah. mill, sort of gears yeah. of war-wise. Um, just a quick note, uh, we are still running our donation drive, so if you want to have a chance at winning some Steam games, and maybe possibly a Gears of War version, um, head over to the site, and on the, uh, in the sidebar you'll see a donation box, and 50 cents of whatever, 50 cents of every dollar you donate gets you an, uh, one entry for a draw, and the other 50 cents goes to help win extra, pay the bills, and have some toys to play with so we can review them for you. Exactly. And uh, while we're at it, folks, we are now everywhere. Well, we're trying to be everywhere. Yes. Uh, to give you as much subscription options as possible to get your uh, your dose of WinExtra's daily brief. So you can now find us at youtube.com slash WinExtra. You can, of course, find us on WinExtra.com. You can find us on dailybrief.blip.tv. And if you go to iTunes and search for WinExtra, you'll be able to subscribe to both the video and the audio version of this podcast and of course you know if you do follow us we want to hear what you say so wherever you are make sure you leave us a comment or drop us an email to podcast at winextra.com and don't forget as well that you can always pick up the phone and dial 251-281-8730 to leave us a voicemail or just send us a text message and we'll read them out on the show and on that note folks this is steve uh, that's paul this has been Daily Brief for February 9th, 2011. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, folks.